Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, we are going to see about the basal ganglia. Basal ganglia is one of the most important structure in the motor system. They have intricate control of motor actions and it is little difficult for us to understand the connections. So we will try to simplify as much as possible. So watch till the end of the video. So coming to basal ganglia, we are discussing in our motor system wherein the basal ganglia will be discussed today. So the learning objective of today's topic will be nuclear of basal ganglia, principal connections of basal ganglia, then functions as well as the disease of basal ganglia. Disease of basal ganglia will make a separate video for it since the Parkinson's disease which is the most important disease is included under basal ganglia. So we will try to cover it in a separate video. Coming to the other parts that is the nuclei, principal connections and functions will be discussed in this video. So let us dive into the topic. So coming to what is basal ganglia? The term ganglia is a misnomer here because the ganglia is a term used for a group of cell bodies which are located outside the central nervous system. But all of us know that basal ganglia is located inside the CNS. So instead of basal ganglia, the ideal term should have been basal nuclei. So what are this basal ganglia? This basal ganglia is made up of group of interactive structures. Here we have five interactive structures which are coordinated and functioning to give a final output. So basal ganglia is nothing but a group of deep nuclei which are located in the cerebrum and they are also called as subcortical masses of grey matter. Grey matter is nothing but the nuclei whereas white matter will consist of axons and grey matter are called as the nuclei. So coming to the five interactive structures, we will try to understand them one by one. So first, this one is a lateral view and this is a horizontal view and this is a frontal view of the same structures. And all these five structures are closely located near to the thalamus. So that is why these nucleuses, they can influence the thalamus which in turn it can influence the cortex and alter the movements also. So coming to the most important nuclei that is the caudate nuclei. Here we can see that the caudate nucleus is a bigger nucleus and it has a head portion as well as a tail portion. It is a very big nuclei. And at the end of the caudate nucleus, there is a rounded structure which is called amygdaloid body. Here we are not going to discuss about amygdaloid body. This is the caudate nuclei. And coming to the next structure, these two structures are lying closely to each other and very next to the thalamus. They are nothing but the putamen and globus pallidus. Putamen and globus pallidus. In the horizontal view, we can see here, this is the caudate nucleus. One end of the caudate nucleus is here and the other end is the tail that is here. And closer to the other side, the one group of fibers are passing through it. What is this fibers called as internal capsule? This is nothing but our fibers of internal capsule. The internal capsule divides them into many structures. For example, the caudate is on one side and the thalamus is on the other side and the globus and putamen is on the another side of the region. Now coming to the other view which is the frontal view. In the frontal view, this yellow shaded structure is nothing but our thalamus. Just next to the thalamus, what is this nuclei? Till now we were seeing it, it is nothing but our caudate nuclei. Then what are these two nuclei which are looking like a cone like structure or a lens like structure? It is nothing but our putamen and the globus pallidus. So it is nothing but our putamen and globus pallidus. These are the three important nuclei of the five interactive structures. And we have two more structures which is the subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra. Here we can see here this structure is the subthalamic nucleus. And below it we have our substantia nigra. Substantia nigra. We have to remember all these five interactive structures because all of them are very very important. So first coming to the most important structure that is the caudate nucleus. Second two group is there that is the putamen and globus pallidus. And the fourth one is the subthalamic nucleus. And the fifth and the most important one which is also called as substantia nigra. So we are going to discuss all these names again and again so that it becomes very easy for us. So coming to the nuclei of basal ganglia discussion in detail. We have the five nuclei that is the caudate, then putamen, then globus pallidus then subthalamic nucleus, then finally the substantia nigra. So all these are the five nucleus which are present. Now we are going to study them in groups also. So the caudate nucleus and the putamen, they are together called given one name which is striatum, striatum. Why it is called striatum? Because the striated internal capsule passes in between these two 
and it gives a striated appearance to the two nuclei. That's why it's called as corpus striatum or the striatum. So it is also called as corpus striatum or striatum. And putamen and globus pallidus, we saw in the diagrams also, they were very close to each other and they looked like a lens. So these two nuclei are grouped together and they are called as lentiform nucleus. This lentiform nucleus is given because of its structural appearance. And clubbing all these three nuclei, that is the chordate, putamen and globus pallidus or clubbing the carpus striatum along with that of the globus pallidus, it is called as the neostriatum. So all these together, all three of them together, they are called as neostriatum. It is the new striatum that is why it is called as neo striatum. And coming to the subthalamic nucleus, there is one very important point about subthalamic nucleus. It is the only excitatory output from the basal ganglia. It is the only group of neurons which gives an excitatory output. And the excitatory neurotransmitter that is involved is nothing but the glutamate. The excitatory neurotransmitter involved is glutamate. So we have to remember it for MCQs also because it is an exception. The rest, all of them are going to produce the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Then coming to the substantia nigra, the nigra, the term is given because of the black color. It has the melanin pigments. So it is looking black in color. That's why the name substantia nigra is given. And inside this also we have further divisions of two nuclei that is the globus pallidus. It is further divided into globus pallidus internal segment and globus pallidus external segment. So globus pallidus IS is for internal segment, globus pallidus ES is for external segment. So it has two segments that is why we have divided it. And coming to the substantia nigra, this is the most important nuclei involved in Parkinson disease also. It is also further divided into two. Substantia Niagara pars reticularis and Substantia Niagara pars compacta. Substantia Niagara pars compacta. Out of these two things, the Substantia Niagara pars reticularis, they produce the neurotransmitter GABA and Substantia Niagara pars compacta, they produce the neurotransmitter which is very very important that is dopamine. And in our Parkinson's discussion, we are going to come back again to this substantia niagara pars compacta and the dopamine part. It, this part will go to the striatum and forms the nigro striatal pathway and if this pathway gets affected then the person is going to have some Parkinson's disease. And coming to the most important points in this nuclei, the subthalamic nucleus is the only one which is giving an excitatory output which is with the help of glutamate and substantia niagara pars compacta is giving the dopamine output to the striatal pathway and this is the one which is involved in Parkinson's disease. Rest all other nuclei, they are inhibitory including the substantia nigra pars reticularis as well as the compacta and all of them, rest all of them is going to produce the neurotransmitter GABA. They are going to produce the neurotransmitter GABA which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now coming to the connections. This connections is very very seems to be intricate as you can see here. The connections in basal ganglia is very very important at the same time it is very confusing. So this entire diagram is important so we have to remember every detail about this diagram. So I would suggest you not to go and read this diagram as such. So let us try to split this diagram and read it. So first let us try to split it and finally we will come back to the entire diagram. So first coming to the principal connections of basal ganglia, let us talk about the inputs to the basal ganglia. What are the inputs that the basal ganglion is receiving? The basal ganglia is involved in motor activity, I already said and it is in association with the two parts of the brain that is the cortex as well as the thalamus. So it has to receive inputs from both of these structures because once it receives these inputs, they will process these inputs and give their output to the corresponding neurons. So both the inputs that is from the cortex as well as the thalamus both of them are excitatory inputs, both of them are excitatory inputs and they are going to produce a neurotransmitter that is glutamate and there is specific name for pa these pathways also from the cortex to the striate. So what is that pathway called as cortico striate pathway. It is pretty simple, the name is pretty simple because it is going to produce cortico striate pathway from the cortex to the striate. Then from the thalamus to the striatum, what will be the name? Yes, it is thalamostriate pathway. It is pretty simple. It is thalamostriate pathway. 
So, there are only two inputs to the basal ganglia. There are only two inputs to the basal ganglia. In a similar manner, the basal ganglia, from the basal ganglia, there are only two outputs. And one of it goes from the globus pallidus, IS is for the internal segment. Globus pallidus internal segment and substantia nigra pars reticularis. This is not compacta, it is pars reticularis. I told you, except, except for the dopamine and the glutamate, everything is going to release GABA. So, GABA fibers will go from both of these structures. So, point number one is this inputs from the basal ganglia and second is the outputs from the basal ganglia and third one more group of neurons is there which is directly going from the thalamus to the cortex. So, third group of neurons are nothing but the thalamus to the cortex. So, all these group together it is named as cortico striatal thalamocortical loop. So, the name given for this entire loop is cortico striatal thalamocortical loop. So, now let us talk about the internal connections of the basal ganglia. So, coming to the internal connections of basal ganglia, we have the striatum which includes the caudate as well as the putamen and the rest other parts. This diagram has to be represented in a similar manner so that it is easier for the final diagram. So, coming to the striatum, we have drawn at the middle because striatum is the one which is receiving the inputs and giving the outputs outside the interconnections also. So, striatum is in the middle and we have the globus pallidus external segment on one side, globus pallidus internal segment on the other side and the subthalamic nucleus in between them. The subthalamic nucleus we have represented here and the final one which is the substantia niagara pars reticularis and substantia niagara pars compacta. One neuron we have started in the discussion at this beginning itself that is the substantia niagara pars compacta. This substantia nigra pars compacta, it is going to give its fibers to the striatum. That is, what is this pathway I said? It is nothing but our nigrostriatal pathway. And what is the neurotransmitter involved? The neurotransmitter involved here is nothing but dopamine. And from the striatum, inhibitory neurons go to various different places, especially the globus pallidus external segment and globus pallidus internal segment, and finally the substantia niagara pars reticularis. So, the striatum is going to give the inhibitory neurons to all these three places. And what is the neurotransmitter which is predominantly inhibitory inside the basal ganglia? It is nothing but the GABA. So, all these places will have the GABA as their neurotransmitter. And now coming to the one more set of inhibitory neurons that is from the globus pallidus external segment to that of the subthalamic nucleus. And the neurotransmitter here it is also GABA. So, these are the inhibitory neurotransmitter connections inside the basal ganglia. And I said in the beginning itself, there is one neuron which is giving the excitatory impulses. What is that? It is nothing but the subthalamic nucleus. And subthalamic nucleus is going to give the stimulatory stimulus to two neurons. That is the globus pallidus external segment and the globus pallidus internal segment. And what is the neurotransmitter here? We already saw it is nothing but a glutamate since it is excitatory neurotransmitter. So, these are the interconnections within the basal ganglia. So, let us try to revise them a bit. The first connection which is important is nigrostriatal pathway neurotransmitter involved it is nothing but the dopamine. From the striatum we have three groups of GABAergic neurons that is striatum to the substantia niagara pars reticularis, striatum to the globus pallidus internal segment, striatum to the globus pallidus external segment. And one more inhibitory neurotransmitter pathway is there between the globus pallidus external segment and the subthalamic nucleus that is number 4. And finally, from the subthalamic nucleus, we have excitatory input to both the globus pallidus internal segment as well as the globus pallidus external segment. So, all these pathways are very very essential. So, now let us put all of them in one place. So, what are the inputs to the striatum? We have two inputs, one from the cortex and another one from the thalamus. The one which is shaded in green, here are the inputs to the basal ganglia. And what are the outputs to the basal ganglia, from the basal ganglia? One is from the globus pallidus internal segment and one other one is from the substantia niagara pars reticularis. Both are going to the thalamus and these pathway we have indicated in blue. These are the outputs from the basal ganglia and rest are the interconnections of the basal ganglia. Apart from these, 
one connection which is there from the thalamus directly to the cortex visa that is the thalamocortical loop is completed that is giving the neurotransmitter glutamate and one more inside the striatum also there are some cholinergic system this is called as intrastriatal cholinergic system so overall coming to this pathway there has to be a balance between three set of internal connections that is the nigrostriatal pathway and the intrastriatal cholinergic pathway which is there present inside the striatum and the striatum to the globus pallidus as well as the substantia nigra. So all of them have to be in a balance to understand and realize a proper movement of the body. If there is a disbalance then disease is going to happen which we will discuss in separate videos. So coming to the functions of basal ganglia, what are the overall functions of basal ganglia? So it is involved in control of motor activity especially by controlling its closest structure that is the thalamus. This basal ganglia along with the cerebellum they are helping in selecting the further movements also like what is going to happen in the next step. Here in the inside the basal ganglia any abstract thought is converted into a voluntary action. So primarily it is involved in the motor system. Not only in the motor system the caudate nucleus is also involved in it some cognitive functions. This caudate nucleus this is a recent finding that especially the caudate nucleus is involved in cognitive functions also. And finally, all the entire basal ganglia circuits have been implicated in learning and memory process also. So in the coming videos, we are going to learn about the disease of the basal ganglia and few other important circuits of the basal ganglia. So stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for the watching. Subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thank you so much.